Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new painting tutorial and this time I'm going to explain how I will paint the privateers, okay? I've been doing some first some test miniatures like this one. So this is going to be uh, what is uh, what I want to achieve, okay? And I'm going to do the leader of the unit. So this is the objective, this is where we start. I, I don't explain the base in that case. It's just uh, uh, dry brushes of grays and and aqua colors basically, and then a wash of aquatic shade, just to give this rocky look. Okay, uh, I will do some other effects, but uh, uh, it's not important for what I want to explain here. So I will focus on the miniature. You is being primed with lead belcher, okay, to start with a metallic color. Uh, this will help to speed up a little bit the painting, and I will go. I will do as well some fancy. Uh, things with the uh, contrast paints on the metallics. So we start with uh, Zamezi Desert, okay, and this is the color we are going to use for the different clothes that uh, he has, okay. So I'm going to apply this mainly in this case is on the sleeves, okay, and on the trousers. But the sleeve looks more like an accordion than the sleeves. So we are going to apply this, it's a color that you can see it goes very well on top of black. And I apply this uh, because this he has a, a, a full uh, armor at the chest, okay? So this guy is quite heavy armored and this is why I wanted to start with a metallic color. So I apply this on the two arms and legs and I'm back. Okay. Um, this is how it looks like after applying this uh, cream yellow and now I'm going to apply a little bit of light belcher although this was the priming color we have used here I realized that the primer does not reach very well so I will apply light belcher just to be sure that I have a nice metallic base okay do it in any part where you feel that lead belcher was not the spray was not reaching the miniature well. Okay, it's mainly this part for me. Uh, I did this in two steps. First, I prime it black, and then I prime um, lead belcher on top uh, on the spray. Okay. Okay. You know it's good. Okay. I will wait to be sure that uh, what I have just put device and I'm back okay next I'm going to use Bathasar gold where I want more a bronze so I will play with the met different metallics and in that case I will use Bathasar gold in some of the parts where I want really a bronze looking so because Bathasar for me the gold is called wrongly gold it's not gold at all it's more a bronze color can be a good base for gold but I don't know why they call it like that. Okay, for example, we can apply this. Let's put it here at this at the muzzle of this gun. Okay, you will see that. Uh, and you apply this in the part where you want to have this uh, more cooperish part. So I will play with this and I will play with other tones to have uh, different colors. To be fair, I don't know exactly what weapon is supposed to be this thing. It looks like a Martian. Uh, Weapon from Mars attack almost. So it's quite a strange weapon. This full of small holes. But it's quite the equipment of these guys is quite strange. Okay, they are very cyberpunk. weapon is explained in the card but I don't remember now the name they put in the card for the weapon uh, I'm going to put for example as well this type of strange pistol Uh, 
and with that you do different elements. For the head I will use a different technique, okay? Because all, all I want to be consistent with the rest of the warband. The head. But I will keep doing that. But we can do a part of the head or not. Yeah, it's just a matter to start looking and see what I want to do with this gold. So they go to the backpack. The backpack is the part that inspired me for more for this. So we will do this type of uh, I don't know things that he has. The backpack like deep, a small deposits so or Okay, so I apply this balsas of gold on all these parts that I want more bronze color and then come back. Next I'm going to use Rhinox Hide to do, in that case, some belts and uh, the part of the boots and the gloves. So you can see in this miniature I also did this, but in, in this one it's metallic, okay? So but we are going to do gloves and it's the complementary color to the uh, beige or to the ochre. Okay, and well, the complementary is not the complementary. It's the it's a color that will help to to counter or to will will help in supporting the the other color, right? It's complementing, but it's not the complementary. Okay, so I'm going to apply it there where it's visible. Okay, so I'm trying to look for. Parts. I will do, for example, this part like if it's leather. And then we, the, he has the metal things on top. Okay, and then there is small belts here and there, and I will try to pick them right, like this one here. I will do it like uh, I expect this to be yeah, have a buckle, so I guess this is the leather leather bell to help to hold the weapon right so this this one here and then I will need to run and there are some others here that are holding the parts together for example this one I will do it Okay, because uh, I see a vocal at the end, so I will do like that. Then there is a couple more here horizontal. Okay, this and this. So I will do all this, and I come back once this is done. Okay, I had applied Balthazar gold. Next, I'm going to use snake uh, leather, uh, snake bite leather. Sorry, uh, and then we are going to do uh, some shading that will give this goldish color. So, uh, snake bite leather on top of lead belcher is giving this nice alternative bronze color. Okay, very looking very old. So we are going to do this on the mask of this guy. Okay, uh, try not to hear it, I, I have to spread this out because there is too much there and they're wearing masks, so just cover everything. Okay, this hole looks like one this half by, okay. You see we have this goldish color, I still see a little bit of um, silver there, so I will put a little bit of this just in this position. And now I'm going to do the different um, type of flexible tubes he has. Okay. Uh, with uh, this is too dry. I will just flake one flesh, so I will go for a bone color. I wanted to use like a flesh, but it was too dry, so we are going to paint with this this type of. Tube, so how this is called? Okay. So I will learn to do them.
just to give the sensation of a want to give the sensation of gravity too, something like that. Okay, so I will do this once and I will do as well this thing here, okay? Uh, I will do also this segmented part. Uh, segmented part I will do it with a, a, a gold color or something like that, yeah. I will. Yeah, this is one thing that normally I, I still, I think the colors on the on while I'm painting the miniature based on how I see the composition. This one is having more colors maybe than the rest of the band. It also have more details and it's a little bit more complex and it's going to be the leader but anyway it will keep the coherency with the rest. Okay. So for this segmented tube and for other parts, I will use Jehenna's gold. I'm also using this for other metallic parts to give the sensation of just to give variety. As everything is metallic, we want to play with different tones and different golds and bronzes and, and so on to give to show that they have uh, different parts made of different materials. So I'm going to do, for example, this segmented tube with Jehenna's gold. It's more orangey gold, this one. Again, it's called gold, but it's very orange. Okay, I will do this, and we are going to do other parts. So I will do some details with Jehenna's gold, and I will be back for the next step. So once I have locked most of the base colors, I will start applying washes to give depth and extra shading. So I'm going to use first um, Seraphine Sepia on the uh, the clothes, okay, on this on the parts that are uh, this yellowish or ochre. Okay, so we are going to apply here the Seraphine Sepia to create the shading of this. I have falls or wrinkles the close and I will do it as well on the tube okay to use the tube and more this will make the two colors much closer but yeah I want to keep all these in, in quite browns and metallic jazz okay or ochres and metallics I don't I want to avoid to use other colors that are more colorful like purples or blues or it's, it's done in purpose I want to give them this look of uh, okay I will call it the steampunk look like the era of Newton and the Victorian era and all these type of things so where the colors were more like natural in a way less bright in my case eh? just in this way so I let it, I, I will need to wait that this one dries before doing the next step. So I'm going to apply it as well here on this tube here. Okay, and here. Try to avoid to go too much on the armor, because I don't want that the armor gets rust effect. I want to give it old but not rust. As a dwarf, they will keep the armors in good shape. So I wait that this dries and I'm back for the next step. So once the Seraphine Sepia have dry, we are going to go with Aquax Air Shade. Okay, on the uh, other, on the gold parts. I mean more on the bronze parts. Okay, like this one here. pipes okay, I will do as well this one here to give more depth on this uh, we are going to do it on this well to help to to 
add a darken line between the brown. We are going to do it anyway, uh, black wash later as well on the dark brown. So don't worry too much at this stage. Okay, um, I will do as well the backpack. Okay, the thing I want to do here is the bell. I want this. We want to really see where it goes and check I'm not missing anything and I'm going to do it well on the backpack okay so I will do this type of uh, deposits that this thing have let's pick it from here okay this pipe they have a very strange design all these backpacks Sparse looks like. Let me do this one here. And then for the other gold that was more orangey, I will use the Reglan Flay Shade. Okay, here I have it. The intention is to give a little bit of color uh, variation, okay, to avoid the monotone. Now we wait that this dries, and we are going to do a little on a uh, black uh, shading, okay? So we wait that this dries, and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next I'm going to apply another wash, and this time it's going to be the noon oil or black wash, okay? Uh, we are going to do this especially on the metallic parts and just to create some shading then we will uh, start working on the highlights and we are going to put it as well on the dark brown parts for example the woods I don't care too much and I go all over the woods because there is only this metallic part and the dark brown we can use quite a bigger brush try not to dirty the lighter parts like the claws or, or the tubes or something like that but you want to pop up all these details that we have on the armor you want to pop up uh, the rivets, you want to pop up the holes, the screws, the, the joints, all these type of things. You want them to have a nice uh, shading around, so this is, will make them more visible. Okay, So I will apply this on, on the all metallic maps. And I will show you once it's done, because we are going to go then to start doing the highlights. So this is the last wash we do on our miniature. And then we are going to be ready to start doing the highlights, popping up the miniature and yeah, getting close to finish. So, but still some work to do, okay? So I will do that. You can see here, I go, I, we can go on this much darker color, we can upload that a little bit on top. It's quite dark, we'll get some sh additional shading, especially on the muzzle of the weapons, you can add a little bit more. And uh, don't forget any part. Okay, so just uh, really this this on top of the metallic give a very nice shading uh, will give you uh, the, a good start point uh, for the next step. Okay, so do this. Don't forget any spot, and I'm back for the next step. Okay, once the wash have dried and all, we are going to start working on the highlights. So I will use um, Zamezi Desert to start highlighting first the different clothes that he is wearing. Okay, we'll take a 
thinner brush. As you can see, I already put the backpack because now that I want to do the highlights, I want to be sure that I do the highlights in the right way on the things that make sense to do it, okay? It's not glued, so I guess it's... I, I want, I can move it uh, out, but I prefer to do now seeing the full uh, group. I already did as well the base, as you can see. Uh, as I said, that's going to be the video that is out of this tutorial. Uh, now I will use a uh, Morphan Brown, Brown, sorry, and I will highlight the different uh, leathery parts, the boots. Okay, that block. I will now use the secret act bronze. So. 
Okay, I mix it a little bit with Lamian Medium and now I'm going to apply it as a highlight on the more cooperish parts. vessels and so on. It's quite a complex backpack what we have here. Okay. Want to add some... The idea is to give a little bit of shiny points and then add to to yeah to make the color because now it's very matte. to make it look less dark and brighter and as well give a little bit of shiny okay next I'm doing the the, the visors or the visors of these guys in green. Okay, so I will use mood green and I will do the eyes. All the lenses, I have to say. Okay. And I will take now Auric Armor Gold. I'm going to highlight the brighter brass we have. Okay, I mean mainly it's going to be mainly the face in this case. So let's start, for example, with this part here. Mustache. These masks are really elaborated. Going to do the coils here as well.
Good. And now I'm going to highlight the silver, and this is the part that will take longer. So I will use silver, I will use all the silver, so iron breaker as the first highlight. I will use light belcher when I need darker tones, and um, at the end, at the edge, I will use a stone silver host. Okay, so yeah, I start with. I start with Iron Breaker. I do, for example, here the map pack. Okay, you go. So you just do it, for example. Now I can come with silver tower, a uh, silver tower, stone horse silver. So with the silver, we can add some additional bright points. Okay, using now again iron breaker. Okay, so sorry I'm talking very low. So I'm using here some horse silver for these edges. Then for the ones that are less exposed, or I want a little bit, bit less of brightness, I go with iron breaker. Okay, so I keep working on these highlights. We want now to make the into All the metal pop up. So we have to put here, and here, and all the rivet with the bright silver. Okay. And we are back. So we'll do this. And we do this, so we apply iron breaker and a stone silver host, depending how light we want to go. For example, here we'll apply iron breaker. This one that is more exposed, I will apply the silver stone silver host. And then here I will apply on this ventilation. Stay there, but doesn't matter. As I make a mistake, I just put no iron breaker, and then I will do a wash with no oil. Okay. The idea is. You take one zone, you try to highlight it. I know with metallics it's a little bit challenging sometimes. Because of how the paints behave are different than regular paints. Bigger there. Ok, 
Okay. And now I will do these joints with the brush horizontal. Okay. We keep working. So I will do the 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 rest of the silver and I come back for the next step. So I was doing all the highlights and one thing that I want to show is that I use a little bit of silver to do highlights on some of the gold parts. As well I did some touches here to make it look brighter. Okay? So, and this is, we'll use now Auric Armor Gold, okay, uh, to do, for example, a little bit of highlight on this thing, just to make look different, the different metallic parts, okay, and so we are going to apply as well here on this segmented tube or connection. we are I will here I will leave it dark and I think this is a, a good point okay to go uh, we can just keep working a little bit more if you want and doing some additional highlight I will take no hazelnut copper okay that is is better than the, the Sikorax and I will do the rim here This part looks a little bit too flat, so what I will do is I will make something like that with the silver. I'm going to touch the different small screws, rivets, or things that are on this thing. Okay, so and then I want you to give me your opinion. I think I will finish here. I will do some. One thing I want to the change, for example, is this tube. I will use the Hasnol Cooper, and I will paint this tube in Cooper color. Okay, I just want to. So now it's now the the the, the thing is to look around and see. Okay, much better now. I think it's making more sense. This tube in this color. We can also use the Hazelnut Cooper to make this a little bit less dark. I mean, just the connection. I will do it a little bit here. Okay, and then on the so if I, I don't know what this represents to me, we'll put it there. Okay. As I say, it is more now to look and see what you want to highlight. And this is I don't like too much, so I'm gonna go with and uh, compensate. Uh, more likely, we will need to reuse a little bit of wash because uh, in some places the I, I by mistake I went into the recess. So uh, one thing that you need to do when you have done the highlights is I go back with Agla and uh, Agla, sorry, this is Noon Oil. Noon Oil and Agla they change, both of them, okay? For example, I applied here again before. And here, this thing, I think it's looking too bright for my, for the comparison of the rest. So I go there and I put a little bit 
just to be fair and to be sure that I, I will do the recess. Okay, so I apply it some, in some places again to when I think it's looking too flat to add some depth that we have made eliminate when we were doing the highlights. Okay. All this is how much you want to go back and forth, most of these things uh, to you want to highlight and then you want to compensate back and, and so on. So I do that. Here I will as well apply because I think it's looking too the grid is not well defined. I think now it's going to be better. Okay, I take it down a little bit. And yeah, I think we, we are there. Okay. So I think this is going to be all for this tutorial. I think this is how to have a nice uh, painted uh, uh, Thandvix. Okay, from the Thandvix Profiteer. So here we have other of the warm one. This is not finished yet, but it's almost, it's also quite advanced as well. His colleague near desk there. And these are the two I finished before painting him. This is where my the ones to test the colors, so you can see how they look like, and I also have the balloon guy. Okay, so here we have the balloon guy is the less advanced of them, so it's the one that need to work a little bit more. Uh, this is how it looks like. I hope you like what you see here. Please let me know what do you think. Give a like if you have liked this video, and yeah, share and, and comment below because it's always very appreciated. So as usual, thanks a lot for watching, and see you in later. Bye.